What is going on guys, girls, people of the internet and the YouTube gaming community? My name is BPR Gaming and today I am giving you a full live stream of the new Discovery Tour mode in Assassin's Creed Origins. <coughs> Sorry about that, I just want to say apologies for my voice. Uh, it's really bad at the moment and there's nothing I could do. But if we just click to this next page... You see the Discovery Tour is there, but also if you go into play, New Game Plus, which I will be starting on my channel soon. But you know what? If you're in the chat, let's say hello to the real Josh Ford, uh, LE Wi-Fi, whoever's in the chat, drop a like on it, comment. And also, guys, if you're in the mood, then drop a donation. Do it. You don't have to. Of course, you don't. Completely up to you. We're going to get straight into the Discovery Tour because that's what we all are here for. I've been so excited for this mode since it became, like, announced, and it's also here. Hello there. Hello, Asim Allah Hojome. Hello, Wushi. Welcome to the stream. Let me know if it's all sounding decent, and whilst this load... Cool, that all sounds pretty decent. Turn the voice down a little bit, and let's turn this up a bit more. Let's just pause this, so the stream's not buffering. I'm break one dollar in my account. No worries, dude, no worries. You don't have to donate, of course you don't. It just helps up the channel, but... Yeah. You guys are here for free content, and that's what you... With content curated by Egyptologists and hundreds of images sought from museums and libraries around the world, we hope to share with you the passion that inhabited us for the four years it took to develop Assassin's Creed Origins. If only history lessons were like this, Wasim. If only, man. If only. Assass Discovery Welcome Tour. To Discovery oh. Tour. Hello. The Assassin's Creed. Ancient Egypt. Sounds pretty cool. Guided tours will take you through majestic landmarks and acquaint you with ancient, e ancient Egypt and their culture. Enjoy the vast panoramas of this beautiful country through the eyes of your eagle, or use an avatar to climb to the very top of the Great Pyramid. Navigate a boat along the banks of the River Nile, or ride a horse across the deserts and lush, fertile lands. Let's do it in this voice. And when a view truly captures your fascination, Take a picture using the photo mode and share it with your friends. We hope you enjoy this experience. I'm sure we will. Sweet. Oh, there's a birdie. There's a pretty little birdie. And of course, we are spawning in as Aya. From Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm guessing it's just a tutorial mode. Move your character, da 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 da. Yes. Let's do this tour straight away. Alexandria, planning of the city. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Okay. That's actually pretty cool. I rate that. Start tour. Welcome to Alexandria, planning of the city. Alexander's plan to build his great city began with a verse from Homer's Odyssey. There is, in front of Egypt, in the sea with many swells, an island called Pharos. Guided by these clues, Alexander the Great founded his future city at the western end of the Nile Delta. I'm sorry, that dude's voice is pretty... It's pretty sexy, not gonna lie. Hello, buddy. Though Alexander considered this location ideal for his great city, it presented considerable challenges. Too difficult to access during storms, the surrounding swamps threatened disease, and the limestone soil prevented the growth of healthy crops. However, due to the influence of his mentor Aristotle, 
Alexander the Great recognized that the true value was its strategic emplacement. Alexander knew that in controlling Pelusium to the east, Memphis to the south, and his crowning glory Alexandria to the west, he would create a triangular stronghold, allowing him to control the entire delta while giving him access to the Mediterranean. That's, that's, that, that, that's pretty smart. That's, that's pretty smart. Okay, next one. Anyway, so I'm doing pretty well apart from this shitty <clears> throat infection, but other than that, it's decent. It's decent. The great walls of Alexandria had a humble beginning. Lacking chalk to outline the future city's foundations, architects were forced to use flour instead. Clouds of migrating birds swept down and ate the flour, erasing the plans. This prompted <laughs> Alexander to seek guidance from the oracles, who reassured him that his future city was destined to feed a large population. And that is right. Oh. Oh, Excavations hello. led by Mahmoud Bey Al Falaki in the 19th century revealed that the wall enclosure measured approximately 5.2 kilometers in length and 2.2 kilometers in width. It was roughly nine meters in height. Let's take a look at this, shall we? Da -da 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 -da. Brilliant. Next one. These formidable ancient walls would resist a number of attacks, including fending off the king of Syria in 169 BCE. Shit. It wasn't until 295 CE that they eventually fell to Roman Emperor Diocletian, and this only after eight months of relentless assault. Shit. This is really cool. It actually is. Like, I'm, I'm learning quite a lot, to be fair. Oh, you can call your horse in this. Sweet. Okay, right. Then there's someone down there. I'll be right back. Do not go anywhere. Take a look at the city. Do some shit. I came back. Sorry about that, guys. Fucking postman. <laughs> okay, let's continue with the tour. Alexandria is actually one of the most beautiful cities ever. It really is. Alexandria's principal architect, Dinocrates, chose a Hippodamian grid plan. The grid maximized functionality with wide, straight roads and canals running beneath them. Alexander recognized the military value of the city's design. The wide, parallel streets gave him optimal surveillance of the city while allowing the unobstructed flow of troops. Damn, man. This is just so cool to learn about <laughs> these cities and these... I say these, I mean the lives of the citizens. It's just, it's just amazing to... To see. A central corridor ran from the Mediterranean's north port down to Lake Mariotis to the south. This thoroughfare acted as an unobstructed link for commercial trade and travel between the two ports. Many of the streets were bordered with grand buildings and parks, including Canopic Street, with its impressive gate bordering the eastern end. Jesus, man. This is so insane. It's so cool. Ah, by the way, these bridges have always reminded me of the ones from Assassin's Creed 2, you know, in Venice or Florence. <coughs> They're friends, there. there you go. If you guys in the stream, like it, share it, subscribe if you're new for more of these walkthroughs. 
Alexandria was most likely built upon an already existing Egyptian village. Upon its completion, the Egyptians reviled the city, refusing to call it by its founder's name. Instead, they called it Raqqed, the building, as a mark of disdain, which was later Hellenized into Rakotis. Um, Despite this, the name Alexandria would remain. These old pictures as well and paintings are just so, so awesome to see. It's so cool. Okay, cool. Welcome to the Discovery Tour by Assassin's Creed. You can now explore ancient Egypt at your own pace or select options to choose a new tour by opening the pause menu. Let's do this. Okay, so there are 20 in Egypt. There are 14 in Alexandria. 20 day life. Da, 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 da. Okay, but let's start off with Alexandria. Let's go Greek. Greek? <laughs> Greek pharaohs, okay. And you know what? Let's change, let's change our character, okay, guys? Whoever's in the stream, look at these now. Are we going to do Bayek or Aya, Aya, Julius Caesar, Cleopatra, William Miles, Layla Hassan, Tommy 13, uh, Hemu, Shade, Reda, Hasina, the actor, just an Egyptian woman, Egyptian nobleman, Egyptian noble woman, Roman soldier, Greek noble woman, Greek noble woman, Greek man, Greek woman, Ptolemaic soldier, Bayek with Egyptian hedge, Bayek with Egyptian Aitu, and Bayek with Egyptian Nawak, or... Bayek as a Persian soldier. Do you know what would be quite cool if they added in time just like different animals? But you do that. Passport. Oh, okay, so you got different stamps on when you complete them. That's that's okay, that's pretty cool. Not got that. That's Oh, that was thirty minutes long, Jesus. These are all quite quite cool. And we have a timeline, hell yeah. Okay, so in the one that we are, we have Cleopatra, and then see obviously Common Era. We have the Great Pyramids. We have uh, Tutankhamun, uh, Ramesses II, Alexander the Great, obviously, and then Cleopatra. Okay, you're saying Caesar. Let's go for Caesar then. Julius Caesar, the old guy. Uh, let's do Greek pharaohs. We're gonna fast travel there, just so it doesn't take so goddamn long to get there. Even though it'll probably take us longer to actually. Fast travel, then it will be to actually, you know, all that. Oh, okay, this is cool. This is, this is cool. That moment in the future, they add in a combat so you can actually fight as Julius Caesar. How awesome would that be? <laughs> Probably just me thinking that, but screw, screw you guys. It's, it's cool. At the moment, this mode for me, it's really good. Take a photo. <laughs> That's what we're going to do, okay? Halfway through the stream, we're going to go climb up. Actually, do you know what? Wait, we're going to close that. Okay. And we're going to take a picture as Julius Caesar. Okay, no, he's big. He blinked. He actually did blink then. There we go. Okay. Right. Do, 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 do. Edit mode. Okay, right. We want him. Not that blurry. We want a bit blurry, but not that blurry. Exposure, no. Tint, now. Of course, you want visual saturation. Okay, there we go. Let him save. Is he gonna save? There we go. Cool. Right, let's start the tour of the Greek pharaohs. Alexandria. Start tour. Welcome to. The Greek Pharaohs. Thank you. Memories of the game is coming back to me. <laughs> ah, this is so much. Ah, the music as well is so good. I'll be quiet so you guys can hear it. The music is so ah. Oh. When the music in a game really gets you going, that's when you know it's a good game. Okay, subscribe. Thank you, Asim. Also, donate if you want. But oh well, you don't have to. <laughs> but anyway, the music ah, oh, the music. Pharaohs were considered divine incarnations of the gods. As an avatar of the gods living on Earth, the pharaoh's role was to preserve fundamental values and universal harmony by removing chaos, easefet and ensure that justice, Mott,
prevailed. Nice. The Pharaoh, by divine ancestry and through multiple offerings, was the bond that unites the world of men to the world of the gods and allows the maintenance of the cosmic order. That's cool. That's that's actually really cool. Okay. It's like with Mirror's Edge, okay, when the the music in that game is insanely good. And when the music really gets you, then that's when you know it's a good game. Like a hundred percent. The Ptolemaic dynasty reigned over Egypt from 305 BCE to 30 BCE. The dynasty was called the Ptolemies of the Lagids, in recognition of the founder of the dynasty, Ptolemy Lagos, a Greek general and close friend of Alexander the Great. While Macedonian, Ptolemy Lagos understood that to be accepted by the Egyptian people, he would have to adopt their traditions. Upon assuming the title of Pharaoh, he changed his name to Ptolemy the First Soter, meaning savior. So he's, he's, he's pretty humble then, yeah? Yeah? Sure. Why do statues always have their noses taken off? Like, I don't know. Like, they always do. It's weird. Uh, welcome back, Josh. Oh, okay. This game is so fucking awesome. Born in 356 BCE, Alexander the Great went through a hasty education in the affairs of the kingdom before integrating into the Macedonian army, where he quickly rose through the ranks. After his father's assassination Look at his in 356 eyes. BCE, which some believed was orchestrated by Alexander himself, he became king of Macedonia. Ruler of a unified kingdom and leader of a large army, Alexander set his sights on conquest. Eager to reclaim the Greek cities of Asia Minor, he took on the Persian forces, earning victory after victory. That reminds me of Julius Caesar a bit, the way he just wanted to take over city after city after city, conquering the world. Like, oh, hello, buddy. <laughs> I know what's in you. Check it out. Ever victorious, Alexander the Great marched on, laying siege to city after city until he reached Egypt, where the Persians were defeated yet again. Viewed as a liberator by the Egyptian people, Alexander decided to become Pharaoh in due form. He traveled to Thebes to make a sacrifice to Apis, then went to the oasis of Siwa, where he was proclaimed son of Amun. Siwa. Officially Pharaoh of Egypt, Alexander spent much of the winter there and founded the city of Alexandria. Perhaps not coincidentally, being pharaoh allowed Alexander to spread propaganda to prepare further conquests. He resumed his military campaigns in 331 BCE. Shit. This dude is just like a roundhouse mother mother trucker like On his shit. In 323 BCE Alexander the Great gifted the satrapy of Egypt to Ptolemy Lagos. Perfectly aware of the value of Egypt, Ptolemy ensured not only the stability of the country's borders, but also its economic and military development. At the same time, he worked with the Egyptian elite to maintain the internal order of the country. By 305 BCE, Ptolemy, well respected both in Egypt and in the Mediterranean, was at the head of the largest fleet of the Hellenistic world. Ptolemy officially took the title of Pharaoh of Egypt in January 304 BCE, on the anniversary of Alexander the Great's death. Shit. This dude is just... He's just insane, man. Like, literally insane. Here we go. Alexander died in Babylon in 323 BCE. His remains were placed first in a solid gold sarcophagus and then within another. The casket was carried in an ornate custom wagon, gilded and set with precious stones and pulled by 64 mules crowned with gold. Holy oh, shit. The funeral procession was diverted to a grandiose temple in Alexandria, built in the conqueror's honor under the orders of Ptolemy the 1st. Shit. So he had he had a pretty he had a pretty big funeral Julius then. Shit. Caesar visited Alexander's tomb at the capture of Alexandria. Yeah, he did. And the Roman Emperor Augustus reportedly placed flowers there. 
However, though many powerful leaders claim to have visited it, the tomb's location has gone missing from history. Shit. Some accounts do state that the golden coffin was replaced by a glass sarcophagus, probably by Ptolemy X. It is also implied that Cleopatra may have plundered the tomb in a time of financial crisis. I believe that, that bitch. And there we go, that is that tour completed. These are just... Oh, the music! Right, okay, if anyone in Ubisoft sees this video, please follow me on Twitter. If you're not already, then follow me on Twitter, at DPR Gaming, okay? And just just link me to, to the music from this game, okay? Because it's... This is my type of music, the atmospheric, you know... Oh, it's just so... So good. Okay, right. Let's climb. Let's. We have to climb. We have to climb a building. Okay. We just. We just do. We <laughs> Jesus, guys. We're climbing to the top of Alexander. Alexander's. Alexander's the Great's tomb as Cle as Julius Caesar. Like, who would have thought you could have said that? Like, see. <laughs> I am the night. I am the darkness. I am Batman. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. Let's get a bit hot in here. Tin. We don't want no tin. Actually, yeah, we have to have a little bit. Because that's it. This is so cool. Oh, so content. Okay. Uh, they have no nose because uh, they have no nose because more than likely it represented the Negro, uh, the Negro nose. Well, the Greek artists use the same for structure for most organizers. Oh, okay, thank you for letting me know. That's a cool photo. Right, which tours we complete next? We have completed obviously the first one in Alexandria. We have do, 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 do. we have Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. The Paneon, the... Sure, we're going to save the Cleopatra one to last, okay? This stream is going to be all about Alexandria, okay? Is that Alexandria? That doesn't include it. No, okay. Right, this one's going to be all about Alexandria, so let's do some... Let's do some pretty quick ones. Let's do that one. That one's two minutes. We can... Let's run there, okay? Do we die if we jump off? Do we still die? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't die. That's that's good to know. Jump, do the roll. Okay, and I love how they also modded him so he doesn't have any weapons. So fuck you. So there's no need for people to actually complain about. But if he has weapons, then why can't he use it? My kingdom for a glass of water. The fuck did I just fall in on to? Fight beasts. <laughs> We have to take a picture. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus, man. I love the saturation. Just saying. Okay, saved. Right. Saving. Saving. Cool. That's just... I've never seen that actually in the game, and I've had over like seventy hours plus. Although those people probably have like hundred plus, but that's that's not me. Okay. It's just nice in this mode as well because you can literally just just explore, and it's <laughs> it's fun just to be able to explore with not having the need to fight someone every ten minutes. Oh my god. Right. This game mode is insane. Okay, I don't know if these were here before or what, but I've seen two things in this game mode in the past... How long have I been alive? 25 minutes that I ever did when I played the game through for 71 plus hours or whatever. Right. The Panion H. Alexandria. Learn about the Panion of Alexandria. Two minute tour. Let's start. Welcome to the Panion. Panion, not Panion. And it's a sexy dude's voice. 
The Panaean was a temple built in honor of the god Pan, divinity of nature. This Greek god, often represented as a half-man, half-goat, with a beard, horns, and goat's hooves, was considered the protector of shepherds and herds. Oh, shit. Let's have a look at him. I'm jealous of his beard. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. I'm just, jealous, I'm just jealous of his beard. That's it. That's all I have to say. I moved the subscribe thing over just so it's not covering the um, images. Pan's attribute was his namesake musical instrument, the Pan flute. His temples were usually located in caves and on high mountains and were frequented by shepherds. It is likely that Mediterranean cults adopted the imagery of Pan to symbolize the Christian devil. Shit. What? Why is he the devil, man? Come on, look how cool he looks. Okay. Okay. To give proper honor to the god, Alexandrians built an artificial hill upon which they housed his temple to compensate for the flat relief of the city. The artificial mound had the shape of a spinning top or a pine cone, which was accessed by a spiral staircase. The top had a panoramic view of the entire city. Only such heights would be fitting for a mountain god. So he was a mountain god then. Well, shit. And that was that one done. Brilliant. Okay, so next tour then, I guess. Um, let's do... Yeah, let's do that one. We're going to run there. Just give me a minute. Um, the new game plus was made about me by Discovery Tour. Can't. Because I have to tell you, you're going to watch play the game. Exactly, exactly. And then you get to use all your gear again. It'll be fun. Right. Next tour. Alexandra, a commercial hub. Learn about the major economical role of Alexandra during ancient times. Yes, please. Okay, the Julius Caesar just had Senu. Oh my god, we can be Senu. Fast travel. Okay, this is a cool move. Why couldn't you do this in the, in the game anyway? Like, just go see, oh, I'm gonna fast travel there. Fast travel. That'd be, that, that's a pretty cool thing. Right. And I still got the sniffles, okay, guys? I'm sorry. <laughs> right, oh yeah, also. Um, some of you might not know this, but there's no fall damage. So, at some point, we will be going and jumping off the tallest pyramid in the game. And we won't die, because no fall damage. Like, at all. Which is a obvious, obvious move, because you're not doing combat, so there wouldn't be any health. Anyway. Let's see. Don't die. Just land. You kind of feel like a superhero. I'm not going to lie to you. You kind of feel like you should be... Like, why am I jumping? Okay, jump down. There you go. Come on, Caesar, get your head in the game. Can we see this horse? Oh, you can't see horses either. Hmm, Caesar has a senu. They all have a senu. They're bastards. Okay, brilliant. Start tour. Welcome to Alexandria, a commercial hub. The ports of Alexandria were a major commercial hub, effectively connecting Egypt with the Mediterranean regions and beyond. A tremendous amount of materials and goods flowed through the city on a daily basis. Damn, the city big. The large port market was called the Emporion. It was there that merchandise was traded by the ship owners, called Nakliros. Ship. The city's just so bustling with life, it's... It's fantastic to see. Chickens! If I had a sword right now, I'd so kill them. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Okay, next tour. Run, 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 run. Food and other artisan work streamed out of Egypt. Ceramics, glass, golden rings, and minted coinage. The local potters, using traditional Egyptian techniques, competed with those from abroad, and the textile industry flourished. What Egypt did not produce itself was acquired through trade, using local resources such as wheat and papyrus. Most sought after was nice. pine wood from Syria, iron and marble from the Greek islands, 
gold from Spain, and exotic fruits from Europe. Shit. All this commercial activity contributed to the already decadent wealth of the city. It's just insane how much this city got. Like, how much it's worth and everything. It's fucking insane. Oh, look at it. It's just so pretty. Okay, move. Sweet. The wood imported to Port Mariotis through Alexandria's seaward ports was used in the nearby shipyards, where most of Egypt's ships were built. Employing tens of thousands of shipbuilders, the shipyards contributed to establishing the Egyptian fleet as one of the mightiest of the era. Any wood not used in shipbuilding was further disseminated through Egypt for various purposes. Probably for like building houses or stuff like that. I'm gonna follow the tall line. I could just walk through there, but I'm not going to. We're gonna follow the line. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Hello, sexy woman. I'm Julius Caesar. Nice to meet you. No, okay, then fuck you. Okay, let's go. Meow, meow, meow. Look at my look at the cape. Oh my god. Okay, right. Oh, behind the, the scenes. The port of Lake Mariotis was the biggest in Alexandria. Save for a branch angling westward. The lake size in the Ptolemaic era was roughly 40 to 50 kilometers from north to south. Its waters were maintained by a steady runoff from the Nile. In addition to the lake, a man-made canal was created to assist in the transfer of goods from the city to the port using barges, though it is not represented in the game due to its size. <laughs> okay, that was the behind the scenes stuff. Damn it. Guess it's just too big. Oh, these statues, though. There's one of me. Huh? Okay, I'm definitely that woman with my tits out. Just saying. Just saying. That's definitely something I would do. No, it's not. Actually, I'm that cool tiger. Oh, no. Or the bird behind him. Probably the, probably the bird. Who can fly. And do stuff. Yeah. Banking was one of the most distinctive innovations brought by the Greeks to Egypt. The centerpiece of Alexandria's wealth was the royal systematization of taxes on almost everything. Basic items such as salt, oil, beer, wheat, and linen were heavily taxed. As a result, the royal treasury of Alexandria was able to ensure the economic stability of most of the administrative areas of Egypt. Nice. Um, I don't know about how I feel about Alexandria, maybe bigger than I played before. It, it feels like it because we've never had a reason like a decent reason to come down to these areas um the areas they send us to because the game just doesn't do it but now in this we we really get a sense of just how big this game is and how much effort and time they put into all the little tiny details and it's just amazing to see and find by the late 12th century the channel feeding the lake from the nile silted up Lake Mariotis lost its connection to the Mediterranean, as well as most of its water, as the lake slowly evaporated to a fraction of its former size. In modern times, Lake Mariotis is being kept alive through irrigation. However, only about 17% of its original size remains. Shit. 17%. And that is that tour done. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> right. Obviously, now we have to go do this tour, just just because we because because we do leather and linen. It's gonna be a bit of a bit of a, bit of a boring one. Not, not gonna lie, it's gonna be a bit. It's gonna be a bit boring. Oh, what is that? Hippodrome. Wine. Ooh, wine. Okay, so we go. We did this one, this one, and this one, and then I don't know. I might do Cleopatra, but then we got. The siege, oh, the siege of Alexandria. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this one for an actual video because one, it's twenty minutes long, and secondly, it it make it make a cool it make it make a cool you know video. All right, so three minutes to two minutes, four minutes, seven, four. Is that seven? Two. Okay, let's go. Let's go do this. One. Let's fast travel. 
actually let's change our character okay let's go to ooh, let's 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 be ptolemy okay we're gonna be ptolemy and we're gonna fast travel to do 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 map where's map where's map 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 we're gonna fast travel there to make it easier on our own okay on our own to make it easier on ourselves because we have to do this shit look at him i playing as a child <laughs> look at the clothes man they're just they're swaying in the wind Neil, Neil. Oh, that's good though. It's eh, skid. 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 What is on his feet? What is he wearing? He's a prince. Run, 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 run. Did you know? No, I didn't actually. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, here we are. We are Ptolemy 13. We are about to learn about leather and leather. Nation Egypt. Welcome to Leather and Linen in Ancient Egypt. <laughs> Let's run. Tanning, a process which dates from prehistoric times, was present although not highly valued in Egypt due to the heat. Leather was reserved mainly for things such as sandals, leather bags, dagger sheaths, wearing sandals. and other similar items. Leopard hides, unlike regular leather, were highly valued and usually worn by priests. Damn. So poor people could not afford them. That is good to see. Where's the next one? It's up there. You know we're going to run around, though, because we kind of have to if we want to get the full sense of it all. I will cut you where you stand. I don't want it. Don't. <laughs> That's a weird noise. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Valued for its coolness and freshness in hot weather, linen was the fiber most commonly used for fabrics and textiles. It was produced from flax, which was plentiful in Egypt. Nice. Fibers were usually dyed before weaving. While color was used in the production of textiles, dyes weren't commonly used for clothing, and most Egyptians wore white. The color represented spiritual purity, a goal to reach for every day of one's mortal life. It's a good job I'm immortal. Haha, <laughs> jokes. I wish it was. Oh, okay. Why is he run like he's got something up his ass? <laughs> so I'm saying, so I'm saying. Okay, right, let's... It's up there. Oh, parkour time. That failed. Of course you have to do some parkour. As Ptolemy. Is it inside? Okay, it's up there. Awesome, see? Parkour god. Parkour god. Various shades were achieved using woad. Okay, this is cool. This is, this is pretty cool. Tinctoria. The plant was cultivated for this purpose within the Nile Delta and allowed for the creation of various colors. For example, different maceration times of the leaves would result in colors ranging from red to green, while adding in limestone shifted it to blue. That's pretty During cool. the Greco-Roman period, other ingredients were found, resulting in a wider range of colors. See I would never have seen any of this in a normal game because I'd never had reason to come here. No one has a reason to come here, apart from now, because because it's it's, it's, it's amazing. This tour is insane. All behind the scenes. This area's style is strongly influenced by the dye baths and tanneries of modern-day Fes in Morocco. This helped Ubisoft envision what such locations might have been like in ancient Egypt. While this tannery is within the city walls, back then they were often found outside the city boundaries. The tanner's trade was considered off-putting by the Greeks, as all these operations resulted in noxious smells. Brilliant. <laughs> and that is leather and linen in ancient Egypt. Done. Right. Next tour. Obviously, guys. Wait, that's only two minutes. Three minutes. We want to do wine in ancient Egypt, and then, and then we are going to learn about the Hippodrome, 
and all of its fun. Slippery slopes. Have you tried sliding down this? Sliding down this. <clears throat> Pardon me. Have you tried sliding? Fuck. <laughs> I can't read fast enough today. Let's learn how to get pissed. Start tour. Welcome to Wine in Ancient Egypt. When the god Horus lost his eye in a war with Seth, the ancient Egyptians believed the eye turned into a vine, and the vine's tears became wine. Shit. Early texts dating back to 3150 BCE contain the hieroglyph for vine. Regarded as extremely valuable, wine was highly sought after by the elite. It was also an essential part of many religious ceremonies. Getting pissed is a religious ceremony now. A millennia old tradition. Grape cultivation and wine production was regimented in the way typical of ancient Egyptian bureaucracy. Egyptians kept careful records of winemakers, mm. which they clearly identified on labels. Every landowner with a modicum of self respect usually kept a vineyard. This held particularly true in the regions of the Fayum and the Nile Delta. So pretty much everyone in Egypt got pissed on their own wine. Essentially, that's what they're saying. I'm oh, sorry, this game is just so beautiful. Like, I'm sorry, it just is. Documentation shows that only certain craftsfolk were allowed to provide the containers required to store and transport wine. That and rigorous quality control checks established for every step of wine production shows that ancient Egyptians knew that the quality and longevity of wine could easily be affected by any number of variables, which they paid careful attention to. Bad guys. Okay, the last one. The last one, um, the last move in this tour. Egyptians had different kinds of wines most of which ranged in quality from good to very good. <laughs> None of them shit. The sweet Shade, to which honey had been added. The soft Nejem, obtained by drying the grapes in the sun. The Ma, reserved for religious ceremonies. Oh, she's on the table. was the Peor, the mediocre rated wine, resulting from the second pressing of grapes and reserved for a less discerning palate. <laughs> That is wine in ancient Egypt complete. And now, guys, I know which one we're going to do now. You guys know it. I know it. We're going to do the Hippodrome of Alexandria, and we're going to ride a pony over to it. There's the pony. Oh, look, there's my statue. Hey. Hey, there's my statue. Oh, my God, the music. The music is so fucking good. <gasps> I'm sorry. I'm having an orgasm over the music. Can't help it. Can't help it. The Hippodrome of Alexandria. S start tour. Welcome to the Hippodrome of Alexandria. The main hippodrome of the city was called the Legeon, in honor of Lagos, the ancestor of the Ptolemies. Alexandrians were great lovers of horse racing. They were fascinated by the rivalry of these races. The Agon, as it was said at that time, that every competition brought. This is it was long as shit. Glory. It's massive. Shit. Obviously, in game, they can't make it that big, or else, Jesus Christ. Like, literally, Jesus Christ. The most important chariot race was the Tethrapon. Using four horses with the quickest harness to the front right, the charioteer would race for 12 laps with sharp turns at either end of the hippodrome. The victors were crowned with garlands of olive and received prize money, but the most sought after reward was to be acclaimed by the works of poets such as Callimachus and Pindar. Nice. So basically, it's essentially being made a movie about yourself, pretty much, back in those times. Essentially, anyway. Ooh. 
Hello. I am your king, but actually, he's dead. But. <laughs> Ye hymns that rule the lyre, what god, what hero, I, and what man shall we loudly praise? Verily, Zeus is the lord of Pisa, and Heracles established the Olympic festival. While Theron must be proclaimed by reason of his victorious chariot with its four horses, Theron who is just in his regard for guests, and who is the bulwark of Akragas, the choicest flower of an auspicious line of sires, whose city towers on high, bringing wealth and glory to crown their native merits. Shit. It's a pretty cool poem. That is the Hippodrome of Alexandria. Completed. Guys, if you're on the live stream, click that like button, subscribe if you're new, and also share the video out there. And if you're here, why not drop you a donation? Can mount to cover long distances quickly. Thank you. But I don't want to. Okay, right. Next tour. I said it's going to happen, so it's going to happen. We are going to do Cleopatra. Cle clean? <laughs> Queen of Egypt. Why did I do that? We are also going to be Cleopatra during this, just because we can. Let's go back. What is that? Oh, because I'm my eagle. Okay. That 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 makes sense. Fast travel. You guys ready to learn about Cleopatra? And how much of a bitch she was? <laughs> she just looks like someone who's ready about to fight. Like she just she just does. Like look at her, she's like, oh fight any man. In any field. Okay. Let's do this. Welcome to Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. That is me. Come on, guys, get involved, comment, you know, that type of stuff. Cleopatra the Seventh, Thea Philippator, ascended the throne in 51 BCE at the age of 18. Though her early attempts to maintain power were often challenged, she eventually prevailed and became the sole ruler of Egypt. According to Plutarch, she was the only Ptolemaic pharaoh to speak the Egyptian language. Her intelligence, coupled with a good education and a great political mind, allowed her to make the alliances necessary to maintain the independence of Egypt while Rome was becoming a Mediterranean empire. In other words, she was a manipulative smart bitch. Okay, they're speaking in Egyptian. I can't understand them. Damn, this just looks so cool. It is important to understand that Cleopatra's knowledge of Egyptian language and keen understanding of the culture allowed her to make powerful ideological reference that resonated with ancient Egyptians. By associating herself with the goddess Isid, the Divine Mother, Great of Magic, and Repository of Divine Essence, Cleopatra firmly established herself as the protector of the two lands, and legitimized her place on the throne. Shit. So she used a god, basically, to get herself the queen. Become the queen, pretty much. You clean that floor. Shit, man. So it looks so good. I had to go down there for a mission. <laughs> Upon his death in 51 BCE, Ptolemy XII Aulus bequeathed his kingdom to his daughter and eldest son, Cleopatra VII and Ptolemy XIII. As was custom, the siblings were married. What? The new pharaoh was 10 years old, his sister wife, 17. Okay then. The early years of their reign were not easy. Between 50 and 48 BCE, droughts and floods aggravated Egypt's problems. General Achilles and the royal advisor Pothinos kept intervening in the young ruler's political decisions, and eventually colluded to turn Ptolemy XIII against Cleopatra. Well, By 48 BCE, Cleopatra was in exile. So they were married? Okay then. The hell? 
During Cleopatra's exile, the Roman Empire was not without its own internal conflict. Caesar and Pompey were at war with one another, and after his defeat in 48 BCE, Pompey fled to Alexandria in the hope of finding refuge. This turned out to be an unwise decision. Listening to his advisors, Ptolemy XIII elected to have Pompey assassinated, his head Shh. kept as a gift in the hopes of acquiring Caesar's favor. <laughs> that never worked out. This gambit backfired. Instead of earning approval, the murder of a Roman greatly angered Caesar. Yeah, bitch. Ptolemy's just a dick. Like, let's be honest. The so is Cleopatra, so... Oh, look, it's me. Ha. <laughs> Cleopatra, aware of Caesar's anger against Tom hey. for the murder of Pompey, decided to take advantage of the situation. She returned to Egypt in secret, hoping to establish an alliance with one of the most powerful men of the time. Outside of the legend, where she had herself smuggled into his quarters in a carpet, what exactly happened during that fateful meeting remains a mystery. Mm. However, Caesar seemed to see a better ruler for Egypt in Cleopatra than in her young and too easily influenced brother. Invoking Ptolemy XII's will, Caesar attempted to mediate peace between the siblings. That never worked out. They probably had sex. They probably, yeah, they did. Ptolemy XIII was enraged by the turn of events and his advisors were none too happy to see Cleopatra return. Urged on by General Achilles and Pothinos, the young pharaoh plotted against Caesar and Cleopatra, resulting in the siege of Alexandria in 47 BCE. Crap, dude. It was in March 47 BCE that Caesar defeated Ptolemy XIII's forces. The young pharaoh drowned in the Nile after having fled the battlefield. And we saw it. With her opponents dead or powerless, Cleopatra married her other, much younger brother, Ptolemy the Fourteenth, and finally claimed the throne of Egypt for good. It's just weird. It's just... The end of the Alexandrian War also cemented the romantic and political alliance between Cleopatra and Caesar. Even though she was married to her brother, you cheating bitch. You know, even though it's weird anyway. Oh, first person mode. <laughs> In June of 47 BCE, Cleopatra gave birth to a son, whom she called Caesarian. Caesar did not accept the boy as his heir, choosing instead his nephew Octavian. Shit. Nonetheless, on his return to Rome, Caesar invited the queen and her brother husband to stay in the city. Her presence still drew much disapproval from the Senate. Always a strategist, Caesar left four legions in Egypt and a man he trusted to direct Egyptian affairs, giving him control of the wheat supplies essential to Rome. Cleopatra and her entourage remained in Rome until March 44 BCE, when Caesar was murdered. A hey. By Amunet. Hehehe. <laughs> oh yeah, look guys, first person mode. Wait, can you climb in this mode? Oh god, you actually can. <clears throat> <laughs> First person mode. That will definitely make up for a clickbait title soon. Caesar's most faithful ally, Mark Antony, often visited the Queen of Egypt during his stay in Rome. Unlike most, he recognized the legitimacy of Caesarian, the natural son of Caesar. Antony knew he would need the riches of Egypt in order to fight Octavian and claim the Roman Empire. Cleopatra, in return, saw a powerful ally. In the winter of 41 BCE, she arranged a sumptuous tour of Egypt by boat to show Antony the wealth of her country and the power she held as its ruler. A romantic and political relationship followed. The Roman Senate was once again most displeased. 
To calm spirits in Rome, Antony married Octavia, sister of Octavian. Shit. So it's all just a massive family incest job then, isn't it, really? Jesus Christ. Who knew pharaohs were this into each other? <laughs> oh, God. Despite his marriage to Octavia, Antony remained Cleopatra's lover, and she gave birth to their children. That's just weird. Cleopatra increased her kingdom's territory and started a political propaganda alongside her lover in Egypt and beyond. She hoped to create a Ptolemaic federal empire with Alexandria at its center. Antony eventually repudiated his Roman wife for the Egyptian queen, much to the dismay of the Roman elite. Huh. However, while Mark Antony focused on Egypt, Octavian carefully gained military and political ascendancy over him in Rome. It's so... Cleopatra and her family are all just a bit weird. Same with Mark Antony and Julius Caesar, like, let's be honest. Octavian managed his own propaganda campaign and succeeded. The Roman people hated Mark Antony and Cleopatra. To avoid the censure still inherent in attacking a fellow Roman, Octavian simply declared war against Egypt. <laughs> Rome's power still reigned supreme. The powerful Egyptian fleet, led by Cleopatra as well as Mark Antony's forces, were defeated in 31 BCE in Actium. Octavian arrived in Egypt in 30 BCE to formalize his victory. Fuck yeah. It's worse than an episode of like EastEnders or soap opera. Like, ha Jesus. Here we go. The following events remain difficult to confirm due to the many versions and legends around them. It is believed that after hearing a rumor about Cleopatra's suicide, Mark Antony committed suicide himself. <laughs> she, she's dead, but she just scratched her head. As he slowly passed away. Knowing that Octavian would have her chained and paraded through Rome in defeat, Cleopatra planned her own suicide. She most likely killed herself with arsenic, though admittedly the version where she uses an asp to deliver a fatal bite may be considered more dramatic. Mm -hmm. What happened to the body of Cleopatra is still a mystery. Well, in Assassin's Creed lore, we know she was taken, or killed, by Amunet using an asp, or using asp poison. Look at the, look at the deity. Anyway, so, what could happen? The Assassins could have take, taken the body away and hid it so that no one could use it. That's what I'm saying. Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. Complete. And now I think we should do one more short tour before I end this video. No. 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 I need a short one. Let's do this one. Alexandra, City of Celebration. But yeah, she, that's, she's just... Cleopatra's life is just weird. She's weird. Her family's weird. E everyone's just, just, just fucking weird, man. They're just, <laughs> they're just all crazy. Jesus Christ! Right. Let's start Alexandria, city of celebration. Welcome to. Alexandria, city of celebration. Like most Greek cities, Alexandria offered multiple forms of entertainment. Most were related to cults, religious practices, and the festivities surrounding those practices. Among those festivities, the most important ones were the dynastic celebrations, instituted in honor of the deified Ptolemaic kings and queens. These celebrations could go on for many days and included sacrifices, offerings, processions, and public banquets. Nice. Sounds like a pretty good piss up then, that's what I'm saying. Right. We have to climb up. We have to try and get a nice picture. No, 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 no.
Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Oh, more disco, disco. Games and competitions were organized whenever possible in locations such as the stadium, the hippodrome, and the gymnasium. The residents of Alexandria favored such events oh, hello. where athletes, poets, and musicians from Egypt and other cities of the Greek world competed. Damn. It's just so cool to see. Hey, behind the scenes. Like all good Greek cities, Alexandria had a theater. The architecture of this structure is Roman in style. This is because the team duplicated a theater from Cyrene. Nice. Roman theaters were usually semicircular and built from scratch on a flat area with structures designed to enhance oration. Look how big it is. Greek theaters were more oblong in shape, similar to a horseshoe and favored the slopes of natural hills to support their acoustics. Damn. <laughs> Sorry guys, still dying from a throat infection. Oh my god, no, someone's died. No. At the theater, one could witness the plays of contemporary comic and tragic authors. The play you are witnessing below is Menander's Discolos, more commonly known as the Grouch, well, it's an a play. late and popular entry in the Greek comedies. Huh. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Right. Tour completed. Let's climb up this real quick. You can use a mount to cover long distances quickly. Why, thank you. But I don't think a mount can climb. So guys and girls, that has been it for this live stream. Thank you for joining me for the first look at the new Discovery Mode tour in Assassin's Creed Origins on the PS4. If you guys have enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more brand new Assassin's Creed content. If you're still in the live stream, donate, why not? It helps the channel out.